Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and I'm going to show you. I just did a video of just a little while ago on uh, laser tips and tricks on this 3D pattern that might be my best one I've ever drawn to showing off 3D. I mean, it really, if you can look at this in person, it really shows it off. So how did I draw that? Well, it's just a fluke I came up with, and I'm going to draw a circle, and there's several ways to do this. Uh, you just need a weird shape. So we're gonna, I'm gonna try it. I have never tried this with the letter S and I'm actually gonna elongate it. I just want that hook part. So I'm gonna left click, need to make sure I click off of it. Left click, right click. And I'm just gonna use that part of the S. Matter of fact, I'm gonna elongate it some more. This isn't how I did that one but it's going to work. And then I'm going to smart fill this. I want it in the center of the page. And I actually want it in black. It's what I normally use. So now we have this shape. We don't need the rest of that. But let's left click, right click. And because we have this shape, we could control D and rotate it 90 degrees. Control D, Control D. The good thing about this, we don't have to do any welding or anything. We just had to smart fill it and now we have that shape. And there's, that's all you really need to do. And maybe this was not gonna look as cool, but I'm gonna left click, right click. Then I'm gonna get the twirl tool and I want it really big. This, I drew this thing, uh, almost seven inches. So let's get our twirl tool and make it seven inches. And then we can put it right in the center and let's twirl it. You have to click on it. It was that easy. Now, how did I get the other shape? So let's go P, put it in the center of the page and let's get our ellipse tool. You know what? And we're gonna make this thing Whenever you engrave something like this, uh, this particular one would look a lot better if it was bigger, but it takes forever to run a 3D effect. You know, this might take four minutes to run those two. So start off small. You know, don't go for the whole ball of wax. So let's make this two inches, because that's what we're gonna originally look at. So now let's make an ellipse, and let's make it 2.11, just by chance. Now let's take the Smart Fill tool and fill that in. Now let's take the Smart Fill tool and fill this in. So now we have two different shapes. I didn't need to uh, make them that thick, but the reason, or that far apart. I'm gonna left click, right click in black, okay? I'm gonna make it something other than a hairline. I'm gonna make it 0.25. Smaller the better. Now I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna left click, but I'm gonna right click in a gray. I can barely see it, you probably can't. I'm gonna make sure it's something more than a hairline, 0.25. Let's do this one first so we can see it. I'm gonna to go to object, I'm gonna, excuse me, effect, contour, and I'm gonna to contour to the inside 0.001, and I'm gonna contour in black, even though I said a while ago that you could go from a lighter. So there's part of it. Keep in touch, stay in tune. Now this one I'm gonna left click, and I'm gonna turn it, well, it, we already did that. So now I'm gonna contour it to the inside in that light gray. I'm using somebody else's file and it actually did it in a white. Let's see if we can't back up here. Sometimes when you're working with this contour alignment, um, we're on RGB, white will work. When I start the next video, I need to not use somebody else's. When somebody sends me a file, I get some of their settings. 
Now that doesn't look like much, but that's going to engrave really cool as of this one. So give it a shot, and I'm just gonna, I'm going to show you how I did the first one because how I just kind of like accidentally fell up on it. I had somebody asking me a question about the, um, let's draw another circle, about filling in and then using the eraser tool, which I never use. And I just went through there and made a, a eraser. But then I controlled D and made a duplicate of it, rotated it. Well, we're going to have to left click, right click, Tell you what, let's just kind of start over. It's there. Left click, right click. We're going to start over. And by doing this, you kind of get to see that you're too close. So let's, I went too far. Let's uh, start over. Sorry for that. Now what we could do instead of taking uh, completely apart, we could grab the uh, shape tool and just kind of bring these up delete some of those notes because we really want a smoother uh, transition anyway. So if you have the smoothing tool, that's way too big because we might mess up our circle. And we did. You can't do that. So let's make our smoothing tool just that 0.5 of an inch. And let's smooth this out, even though it really wouldn't matter in this case. And you'll never know. So that's what I started with. And then I'll left click, right click, control D and rotate it 90 degrees. Control D, control D. That's how I came up with that kind of that pattern the other I was doing the other day. So now let's take and put that back in the center page. And now let's get our twirl tool that will have to set back on seven inches. Well, I don't know how big I made this circle. It's only four. And you don't have to use the whole size. You Let's try three and see what happens. See, it left the outer uh, kind of there. So let's look at back. It'd be a little less than in the twirl tool. Now let's make this five inches. Make it way bigger. Pick the center. Click on the item. Now it twirled the whole thing. So that's how I made that pattern the other day, and it looks just as good, if not better, than the S did. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit, and thank you for watching.